But today I want to tell you the rest of the story. Abraham and Sarah go and do what God tells them to do. They get up from Haran and they continue to travel. And basically what they're doing is traveling around the Fertile Crescent. We all learned in middle school geography that grass, the part of, as it's now known, that is fertile, that has grass and rain and, and can support life and crops. And all of civilization has always lived in that Fertile Crescent from the beginning of time. And so Abram continues around the Fertile Crescent, up through Jordan and around, down through Syria and Lebanon and into the country of Israel. And there he breaks camp. He ends up in Bethel, and then he moves to a few places. Eventually they end up in Egypt. Abram and Sarah go to Egypt. Abram and Sarah end up in Egypt. And this is the first time in the Bible we hear this story, but it is not the last. When a famine struck the land, Abram went down towards Egypt to live as an immigrant since the famine was so severe in the land. So he leaves. They have to leave Israel because it's one of the famines, the regular famines that happen when you live in a desert, in an arid environment. And they go to Egypt, which is where people go in the Old Testament and in the New Testament when they need to go somewhere. It's not that far away. There's a nice little strip over the top and they can head right over to Egypt where it's more fertile. We hear the story with Joseph's family. We hear the story again with Joseph and Mary, with Jesus, when they need to escape. People travel all the time. But this is not the last time that Abram and Sarah have to move. They leave Egypt. They get kicked out of Egypt because Abraham was not very nice. And they end up moving, and Lot is with them this whole time. They end up moving back to where they came from. The famine has, has des dissipated. And by this point, Abram and Lot are so rich that Abram and Lot have to split. And so they decide amongst themselves to split up all of the land around the Jordan River. And Lot chooses to go to the, to the eastern side. Abram stays on the west. And there are, all of the time, people already living in these lands. So it's not like they just moved into unoccupied territory. And then they move again because Lot gets in some trouble. And so Abram moves to a new land. And then he moves again. And then he moves again. Are you starting to get a theme? Abram, once he leaves Ur and heads to Canaan, never has a place that he owns again. He's always depending on the kindness of the people who live in the land to help him. He is always dependent upon the grace of God to help him. He never owns a piece of land. Not once. We do hear in chapter 23 that Abram finally buys something. And what he buys is a field that it's a place to bury his wife. That's it. It's the only land that he has, a burying field, basically a cemetery plot. Once God called Abram, he never had a place to rest his head again. And this again is the beginning of a pattern. Whenever God calls people, whenever people are called from their homes into some form of ministry and mission, they never go home again. Now this summer at Concord, we spent time talking about this journey home. All of the ways that people in the Bible are called from one place into another place, another type of existence. And this is the story of the Bible over and over and over again. Joseph gets sent to Egypt and he never comes home again. Moses gets sent out from Egypt and he never makes it to the promised land. He just wanders in the wilderness. Elijah gets sent out from his home, spends a lot of time in the wilderness himself, but he never has a home again. And even Jesus complains, remarks, bemuses, that a prophet never has a place to lay his head and no home to come home to. And so faith is a journey. Being called is a journey. Responding to God's message is a journey, and we never go home again once we start it. And that doesn't mean we don't find homes along the way, places to rest our heads, places to find comfort and community. But we should never be so rested, so rooted, so entrenched that we are not able to move when God calls us to move. Because the spirit is not a settled spirit. The spirit is restless. It moves like the wind. It rushes over the water. God is always active and moving, and God is always changing God's approach to the world. And so God calls us 
the elected people of God, the people who are God's chosen people, not to settle, not to root, not to receive monetary blessings or material wealth, but calls us to go and to seek God where God may be found. Abram never, ever buys a piece of land until it is time to bury his wife. How much land do you own? And are you so committed to that place, that rootedness, that settledness? Are you so convinced that you are where God is going to leave you forever? That you can't take the journey. God's not finished with you yet. I care if you're two years old or 92 years old. Until it's time to find a place to bury. God has something for you to do. So get moving. And we'll see you on Sunday. God bless.